Hello and welcome! As the title suggests, in this video, I will explain, or at least attempt to explain, how accuracy and recoil work in Phantom Forces. The game itself doesn't really communicate well on how these things really work. It's a little complex and I will go into detail about it, but hopefully it will be digestible enough and easy enough to, for everyone to understand. Finally, as a disclaimer, Information in this video may not entirely be correct. I've done research on this, but it's still likely that I may have gotten something wrong. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's go over the basics first. These accuracy bars you see in the stat screen are useless. Never use them as pointers on how a gun performs. It's a massive oversimplification of the entire recoil system. Really, the best way to gauge and like measure recoil is to just use the weapon and get a feel for it and you, you adjust as needed. By the end of this video, I hope you'll be able to learn how to do this, you know, feeling for it and adjusting for it. If you really need to check the statistics, use the advanced statistics panel, which is what I'll be referring to for most of this video. One of the core elements of Phantom Force's gunplay is that the bullet always goes to where the gun barrel is pointing, not exactly where you're looking at. There are a few exceptions to this rule, such as shotguns, because shotguns, but there are also a few rifles that have some spread. As of the making of this video, how spread is calculated is currently being reworked, so I'm going to go through this very quickly. The current and old version is the choke stat. If a gun has a choke stat higher than zero, then it will have spread, and this stat is then later influenced by crosshair size and muscle velocity. Now, this new and upcoming version of the spread stat is a single spread stat, just something that says spread. If a gun has a spread stat higher than zero, then it will have spread, that's that simple. The final and most important thing you need to know is that when you're aiming down sights, your reticle and your gun barrel doesn't necessarily line up with each other, and I'll go into detail about how this works, but first, I need to teach you how to read recoil statistics. When you look at the recoil values, you will see that there's three values inside these parentheses. These three values correspond to vertical recoil, horizontal recoil, and tilt respectively. You might not know much about tilt. This value determines how much your camera or weapon will tilt to the side. It's not really used for balancing purposes. Most weapons have similar values for tilt. It's there to really just enhance the gunplay and makes guns feel more impactful. So we won't really be focusing on tilt. And before I get into the meat of things, these values work the same way for both hip fire and side recoil, but I will be focusing more on side recoil in this video. I will start with camera kick. This type of recoil directly affects the camera, your entire view, but it's not that simple. These values are upper and lower boundaries. I don't actually know what shape it's supposed to be, but for the sake of simplicity, I will use a box. Basically, no matter how much you fire your gun, the camera cannot leave this box. These stats are why your gun recoil doesn't just climb up forever, it stops at a certain point when you fire. Decreasing these values will ultimately group your shots together more in like full automatic fire. These stats also determine your first shot recoil. As you fire your first shot, the camera will spring up into this box, and your second shot will be either close to or inside this box depending on the weapon's fire rate. An example of high camera kick can be seen on the Beowulf ECR as shown here. Moving on to recoil rotation. I said earlier that the gun barrel doesn't necessarily have to line up with your vertical, and this is why. Recoil rotation affects the gun itself, you know, the gun model, causing it to rotate and tilt upwards, mostly upwards. You can see this very clearly on the M231, and it works in the same vein as camera kick. There's a boundary sort of box that the weapon can't leave, and the first shot recoil will send the weapon tilting into this area. Decreasing these values will make the gun tilt, well, less when you're firing. 
but what actually causes your shots to you know move around in this box when you're firing in full auto or you're spamming semi-auto? That's where recoil displacement comes in. As you keep firing your weapon, you know, or it's inside the recoil area, displacement is used to determine where the next shot will go. Basically, it's how far apart each you know, subsequent shots will be, but ultimately, it cannot leave the boundaries set by the previous statistics. Displacement applies to both camera and rotational recoil, but I don't actually know if they use the same values for both of these recoil during the shot. Decreasing these values will make short bursts clump up together more, and unfortunately, there isn't really any in-game examples that really showcases this. Next, we have recoil damping, which ties directly into recoil displacement. This stat determines how fast your shots move from point A to point B during displacement. This value is best described as friction, as the higher this value is, the slower it moves between point A and point B. Increasing this value will also make short bursts group up more. And unfortunately, much like recoil displacement, there isn't really a good in-game example I could show you. It's a pretty subtle thing. Finally, we have recoil recovery. This is very simple to explain. Once all the recoil has been applied, this is what determines how fast your weapon and your camera will return back to the center. Although, keep in mind that recoil recovery doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop firing your weapon. Weapons with slow fire rate can actually have recoil recovery kick in when you're firing in full automatic. This value is divided into hip fire camera, side camera, hip fire, and weapon recovery, and all of these usually have different values. An example of slow recoil recovery can be seen under WA2000. I also need to give a small mention to transitional recoil, also known as translational recoil. It's basically recoil that's applied to your whole weapon causing the entire thing to shift around and it's best seen on the MAC-10 with extended wire stock. This stat is not shown anywhere on the advanced statistics page and I couldn't really find much information about it online either. But from what I know, the pistol grip and the Hera CQR grip are the only ones that affect transitional recoil and it's unknown by how much they actually do. Moving on, recoil can be most adjusted using grips, but the description of each grip does a pretty bad job of explaining what they actually do. It's pretty vague and general most of the time. It would take a very long time for me to talk about each grip and it would be very boring, so I've made a Google Doc which I've linked in the description which will quickly detail the pros and cons of each grip. You should check it out because there's a lot of things the game doesn't tell you, and I will also mention them a little bit in the next section. So now that I've gone over everything, how do you actually apply this when you're customizing attachments in-game? I personally recommend focusing on the weak points of each weapon. If there's a lot of camera kick, then you can add a folding grip, maybe. If there's a lot of rotational recoil, then you could add a pistol grip. If you're using a burst weapon, maybe reduce recoil displacement and increase recoil damping. If recoil recovery speed is troubling you, then you could use a laser or a Hera CQR grip. But ultimately, the choice is up to your own preferences. Build your weapons the way that's most comfortable for you to use. As a final tidbit, I'd like to talk about compensators and muzzle brakes. There's occasionally a discussion about this, you know, about which one's better, and my answer for this is that it depends. Both of them have their own uses. This comes down to the practical differences between vertical and horizontal recoil. Vertical recoil can be compensated by just simply pulling the mouse down, but the same cannot be done with horizontal recoil. It could go either left or right, and nobody can compensate for that and predict it in automatic fire. I recommend the compensator for automatic weapons, because you know, horizontal recoil is very unpredictable and it's going to hurt your weapon at range. For semi-automatic weapons, I recommend the muzzle brake. Semi-autos rely on being able to track your targets for subsequent shots, so reducing first shot recoil helps a lot in doing that. Most of the recoil in Phantom Forces comes from vertical recoil and the muzzle brake cuts that down substantially. 
The fire rate is also often a lot slower than automatics, allowing you to recenter after horizontal recoil, or just relying on recoil recovery altogether. This concludes everything I wanted to talk about. I hope you've learned something from this video, and that my explanations weren't too vague or too hard to understand. If I've made any mistakes, please leave a comment down below, I'll pin those so everybody can benefit from it. But for now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.